So there's been a number of skeletons found um, in a, a burial site in Latvia and they've been um, excavated. And because we know very little about sort of um, information about the hunting gatherers from Northern Europe of that time, um, a team of scientists decided to take um, some DNA from the skeletons um, to try and get more information about them. But what they also found in one of the skeletons was the DNA from the bacteria that causes the Black Death, the plague. I understand it was an accidental find, but it does give us a clearer picture of how these ancient strains of the plague evolved over time. Yes, so um, what's interesting about this, um, the study that they've done, is they could pinpoint the skeletons back to about 5,000 years um, and also pinpoint the plague back to 5,000 years. So originally, um, we know that plague's ancestor way back in time used to be a, uh, a stomach bug, so it wouldn't cause serious disease like we know it does now. Um, and what happened um, somewhere between 1,500 and 20,000 years ago is that bacteria branched off and became uh, Yersinia pestis, which is the bacteria that causes the plague. Um, and over that time between then and the time it started causing pandemics, it gained um, two sort of skills. Um, one, the ability to infect hosts via the skin and another, um, the ability to transmit itself via insects. Um, so the ability with the skin um, started quite um, early on in its kind of history and its ability to infect via insects, it was quite late in its history. And because we now know um, that these skeletons had plague from 5,000 years ago uh, that could infect via the skin, but not via insects, we can kind of build that timeline much more sort of succinctly and neatly. Well, thanks for putting, putting it succinctly to us. Tell us a bit more about why these findings are important. Uh, so sequencing provides a really good and really detailed sort of understanding of the genome of the bacteria. It helps us to understand how it's linked to both its ancestors and also to other um, bacteria and, and other organisms in the environment. How did scientists find this information out? It's quite remarkable to have such information about a man who lived 5,000 years ago. Yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing. What they did was take um, bones and um, teeth and they ground it down into a powder. And from that powder, you can extract the DNA from both um, the skeleton, but also from whatever was kind of living within the body at the time, depending on how well it's been preserved. Um, and once you've extracted that DNA, you can then identify using um, whole genome sequencing the sort of individual pieces of um, the genetic code of both the skeleton and also the bacteria. And then once you've got those sort of pieces of DNA, you can kind of combine them to make the whole genome um, of the organism. And then you can compare it to ones that we have sort of already, so more modern ones um, and ones that we've found sort of from other um, skeletons over time and build up sort of a, a really detailed family tree. Wow. Tell us more about where these bones were unearthed and what else was discovered at the site and what it tells us about this area. Um, so we know, so originally there are uh, two, two of the four skeletons that have been um, excavated were found in um, the 1800s uh, by an amateur archaeologist um, who realised that they were so old, they were 5,000 years old, but nobody at the time kind of believed him. Um, so he sent these bones to um, a German archaeologist um, and after World War II they were kind of lost um, and it was only 2011 that these, um, the skull of these bones were found again. Um, meanwhile, they had then discovered um, two more skeletons and so um, not only were these skeletons 5,000 years old but actually two of them, one of which was the one we found, uh, they found the DNA in uh, for the plague in, um, had been lost somewhere in a dusty box for about 150, 160 years, which is incredible, really. <laughs> Can't imagine it. Even though a bacterial infection and very different to the coronavirus we're seeing today, can the findings of this latest study be applied to the current pandemic? Absolutely. So we're using um, whole genome sequen sequencing um, to help us in the pandemic, and it's been absolutely vital. Um, so we know that the variants exist because of whole genome sequencing. So the variants can be different. So the Delta variant can be completely different to the, um, say the beta variant by sort of one or two tiny little changes. And we know that from sequencing the whole of the genome from all of the ones that we're collecting all over the world. And so it's really useful to find out 
what these differences are, whether they might affect how the vaccine or how drugs might work, but also where it's going over time. So if a scientist in Zambia is sequencing and they find that the Indian variant, the Delta variant is occurring in Zambia, then we know that there's been sort of transmissal between, between the countries. So it's really vital to kind of track it over time and across the world. Fascinating. I'd be interesting to uh, discover what they what they find out in 5,000 years' time from now. Not that that will happen. Lindsay Elton, thank you so much. You're welcome.